Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, I am Elaine and this is Gatsby. And in today's video, we are gonna share with you what it's like to have a Siberian Husky and if they are the right breed for you. Now, I decided to create this video because I felt that I had the responsibility to do so. A lot of the times when I'm walking Gatsby out on the streets, I have a lot of people coming up to me asking me what type of breed he is, um, where can they get a dog like that because he's so beautiful, he's so majestic looking. And and I just get a little worried because I don't want to be the one to make people think that Huskies are so easy to care for. And I also post a lot of photos of Gatsby throughout social media on Instagram. And I also have this YouTube channel where he is pretty much the star of the channel. And I also get a lot of direct messages, people asking me, well, you know, what is it like to have a Siberian Husky? Where can I get one? And my concern is that people think that it's so easy to have a Husky, they decide to go get one, they bring home a Husky, and then later on realize that the breed really isn't for them, and then they surrender the Husky to a rescue or a shelter. Now Huskies are one of the most surrendered breeds to shelters and in rescues because they are just so hard to care for and people don't realize that when they first get them. And I also blame shows like Game of Thrones and also movies like you know Togo and Eat Below because they really put the spotlight on Siberian Huskies so people would want to get them um, and then some of you might ask well how do you know that the Game of Thrones and these movies are actually the culprit of why Huskies are going to the shelters and to rescues well that's because a lot of the shelters and the rescues have reported that a lot of people bringing in their dogs actually name their dogs after the characters um, in the show now, I just want to put it out there that I'm not a gatekeeper of the breed, but I am here to be brutally honest with you to let you guys know what it's like to have a Siberian Husky after having one for five years, my experience, because I want to prevent you from going through the torture, the pain, and maybe even anger and sadness when you realize that the dog isn't for you and you might want to surrender your dog to a rescue or a shelter. So let's get into why the Husky breed is so hard to care for based on my experience and hopefully this will help you determine if the breed is right for you or not. Number one, Huskies have so much energy. Now this is built into their DNA. These guys are made to run miles and miles and miles with so much stamina pulling a sled. So that means for you, you're gonna have to give your dog physical exercise and mental stimulation every single day. And if you don't, they're gonna become very destructive. So when Gatsby was about six months old and he was working with his trainer, this trainer will always tell me, Elaine, if there's anything that you can take away from me, take away this. And that is, if you tire the mind, you tire the body. A tired dog is gonna be a good dog. And that holds true. So one way to provide mental stimulation for your dog is to play a flirt pole with them. Let them chase after something, especially Siberian Huskies. They have super high prey drives. So this will help with their mental stimulation. It's gonna help exercise them, get out, um, get some physical activity in. So that's gonna really help. You should also let your dog sniff while they're walking because sniffing allows your dog to understand their environment so they're using their mind. You can get interactive games like puzzle games and snuffle mats. And most importantly is to have some sort of interaction with your dog. So a lot of the times when I'm on the Husky forums and also Siberian Husky groups, a lot of people would say, well, I let my dog out in the backyard, he's running around, but then when he comes back in the home, he's still being destructive. Well, you have to understand the fact that he also needs some sort of interaction, right? The dog is just not gonna go into the backyard by himself and he's fenced in with four walls and he's gonna you know, walk and run around aimlessly. He might do that for like five, 10 minutes, but that's about it, right? There's nothing stimulating his mind. So if there's nothing stimulating his mind, he's gonna to wanna to do something bad or he's bored, right? You might consider this action to be bad, but for him, your dog might be like, well, you know, I'm bored. There's nothing else for me to do. Let me go, let me go try to dig. Let me go try to jump out of this, you know, six foot fence and see what's out there. Let me dig under this fence and see what's out there. So there you go, and that's my take on that. Now, because of the fact that they have so much energy to expand, they cannot be created all day. So if you have a nine to five job, that's very demanding, which really means that you're working 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Considering that you have to commute to and from work, you're basically leaving your Husky home 
for about 12 hours a day created and that is going to make them go crazy right especially for a breed that is meant to run and meant to explore creating them all day their spirits are going to die they're going to be destructive no matter what so the only way that i can see this work if you have long hours at work is that one you can uh, allocate money for your dog to go to daycare or you can have a dog walker come every few hours to take your dog out for a walk now for me when Gatsby was about six months old we had a dog walker that came to our apartment and walked him for about three four times a day and that wasn't even enough because I had a camera and I saw him being destructive he was trying to get out of his crate and people were telling me, Elaine, why don't you just get a bigger crate, a stronger crate? And I was like, dude, that is not even gonna help because that is not the root cause. The root cause is the fact that he's a puppy, he has so much energy to expend, there's nothing for him to do, he can't run, he can't do anything, he's stuck in a crate all day. It just isn't fair, right? So what I did was I had to allocate money to take Gatsby to daycare. So every single morning, I would get him ready, feed him breakfast, and afterwards I would bring him to daycare and then drive to work. And then after work, I would have to go pick him up and then drive him home. And sometimes I would get stuck in rush hour traffic as well. And thankfully at the time, my boss was very understanding. So I would ask her if I could leave just a little bit earlier to pick up Gatsby and she was cool with it. So there are basically only two variables that you can work with here, which is time and money. Either you spend the time to provide physical exercise and mental stimulation for your dog, or you have to pay someone else to do it for you. Number two, Huskies are super independent, so that means that you are going to need the time and patience to consistently train them. And I feel that Gatsby is pretty independent and he's not always um, very eager to please me when we're doing training, but we still do training every single day, no matter if it's sit, stay, even the basic cues. Number three is the Huskies pull like crazy. So we've been training Gatsby for about five years now because he's five years old, but he's still pulling and it is very frustrating at times. We're still working on it, obviously. I mean, there are some things that you can never stop working on, right? This is what happens when you're a committed uh, dog parent, you know, this is what you have to do. And you have to work with their independent, um, you know, nature and their characteristics, their personality. This is what you signed up for. Huskies are escape artists. So this goes back to when I said that Huskies need a lot of physical exercise and also mental stimulation because when these guys get bored, they're gonna wanna do something on their own. Like I said, they're gonna wanna jump a six foot fence, they're gonna wanna slip out of their collars and try to do something, they're gonna want to break out of their crates. And again, that's why I said it's so important that you put in the time to give them this physical exercise and mental stimulation. Number five, Huskies shed like crazy. And then when I mean crazy, I mean like crazy. They shed about 365 days of the year. So he blows his coat every spring and also every fall. And you are gonna see hair everywhere in our apartment. So we basically eat, drink, and breathe in Husky hair. If you're someone who likes to always wear black like me, then you're gonna have to carry a lot of lint rollers with you. Number six is that Huskies are pack animals. So that means that if you leave your Husky home alone for a long period of time, that's gonna be a problem, right? So this goes back to me telling you that it's so important to provide physical activities and also mental stimulation for your dog before you leave your house. So these days, I'm able to leave Gatsby home about three to four hours at a time if I need to run errands, if I need to go food shopping, because before I leave him home, I make sure that I give him this physical activity and I also give him this mental stimulation so he's so tired when I leave, it doesn't bother him. Number seven, Huskies do not have a strong recall. So that means please, if you have a Husky, don't ever let your Husky go off lead without any training. Because if you do, he's just gonna take off and he's never gonna come back. So if you want your Husky to be off lead, you're gonna need to do a lot of training and also bonding so that your dog will always come back to you. And trust me, these guys are not like golden retrievers and any other dogs. When they're out, they're out. Now, when I was researching about Siberian Huskies, a few articles that came up talked about health concerns like hip dysplasia, eye conditions, and skin issues like um, zinc deficiency. Now, while I believe that this could be true, it also depends on what you're feeding your dog. And for me, I truly believe that you are what you eat. 
So if you're feeding your dog real fresh food, then that is going to help maximize their health and also their longevity. I also create a video about the easiest way for you to feed raw to your dog and I'll link that up here. Number nine, Huskies don't really do well in hot weather. So I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, Elaine, that's not true. We see Huskies out in California and also in Florida and also in Dubai and other hot countries. Yes, that is true. Huskies can survive in the heat, but for me, I feel like why put them through that, right? If they are bred to run in the snow and pull a sled, right? Why take them out of their element? Obviously, if you already have a Husky and then you have to move to a different state as a warm state you don't really have a choice but if you live in a warmer state I highly suggest you not get a Siberian Husky because it just wouldn't be fair for them and as for me in New York City summers have been getting hotter and the winters are not getting any colder so I'm trying to figure out if we can move somewhere up north such as Canada Boston even Boston is hot so we'll see how that goes Huskies have a super strong prey drive. So this guy has killed about three to four pigeons already. He's killed two squirrels. And throughout this time, this all happened at Central Park and I couldn't even stop him. Um, a pigeon was flying and he just jumped up mid air and, and caught it in his mouth, you know? When I brought home Gatsby, we had four rescue cats and it took me about six months to a year to finally get these guys to get along. And even till this day, they don't really get along. It's just that the cats tolerate him. So you have to remember that if you have small animals at home, you have cats, just be very, very careful um, about introducing them. And you're going to have to spend a lot of time trying to build that relationship so that they can thrive together. All right, now finally, let's talk about lifestyle changes because your lifestyle is going to change dramatically when you get a Siberian Husky or even if you get a dog, right? So for me, I have a routine now. Every single morning, I wake up 5 a.m. just to walk Gatsby. I walk him a few times a day. And this is a non-negotiable. We have to wake up, you know, even on Saturday and Sundays, we have to wake up early because dogs thrive on routines. Number two is that a good amount of our paycheck is being allocated to Gatsby. So you're talking about paying for his raw food, his pet health insurance, treats, trips if we decide to go anywhere with him, and also trips to the vet. So whether you get a Siberian Husky or not, it's just so important that you have to allocate money for your dog every single month. Number three is that our activity level has increased dramatically. So Danny and I have always been pretty active, but after getting Gatsby, we have been doing more hikes, we run a lot more so that we can keep up with him because he loves to run. So we bring him to do that on the weekends. So even when we're not hiking, we're bringing him out to the city and he's getting his mind stimulated. He's becoming more sociable. He's meeting people, he's meeting other dogs. Now, after hearing all of that, and if you're still interested in getting a Siberian Husky and you feel like you are very committed to getting one, then that is great. But if you have second thoughts, one thing you can do is to foster a Husky to see what your life is going to be like. Now, there are so many uh, places that you can foster a Husky. I'm going to leave a few in the description link below. All right. So Gatsby and I hope that you found this video very helpful and we just want to be here to prevent you guys from going through the torture, the frustration, pain, and even sadness when you feel like you have to surrender your dog to a rescue. Now the last thing that we want is for you to get a Siberian Husky and realize that it's not the breed for you. You surrender it to a rescue, they get put on death row, and then you get bad karma for the rest of your life. So we don't want that. It's good vibes here only. So if you guys like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one. Okay? Peace. Bye. High five. Yeah.